Hi everybody, it's me Lala. Thanks for stopping by to watch another video. Welcome to our new subscribers and welcome back to our subscribers who have been with us for a while. I appreciate your support of me. You all know that. And our channel, you know that too. And I hope you enjoy this video. I do, I hope you enjoy this video. Happy October everybody. It is October 1st, Sunday, October 1st. 2017, even in my wackadoodle mind it is, and guess what? Guess what? I am 100% sure that is the date. The date is October 1st, 2017. So I hope everybody has had a great, great weekend this weekend. I hope that you are all safe and well, and I thought that we would have a visit tonight since it is the 1st of October, so we would celebrate the new month together. Um, let's do our dollar a day update. So you all know, if you are new here at Lilybug Lane, um, myself and Chewy are doing a dollar a day savings program. And I have invited um, our circle members to also do the dollar a day savings program for the whole year of 2017. So as of today, including today, you should have 274 $1 bills in your envelope. So um, what the dollar a day savings plan is, is that on January 1st, we started an envelope and every single day we put a $1 bill, $1 bill inside the envelope. And at the end of 2017, you will have 365 $1 bills saved up. So you have saved $365 through the year. Um, you know, it is an easy, easy, easy peasy lemon squeezy way to save some money through the year and it be absolutely painless it is absolutely painless and you know it is very very specific it is a one dollar bill paper bill every single day it's not two dollars it's not five dollars it is one dollar and everybody has a one dollar bill that they can spare every single day so, um, and you know, whatever you choose to use that money for at the end of the year, or if you choose at the Christmas holiday season to use it for um, some of your Christmas shopping, you know, that's a way to kind of save money for Christmas shopping. Um, you know, there's a lot of different, uh, there's a lot of different variations on the dollar a day savings program. You can have an envelope for each child in your family and put a dollar in each envelope a day if you want to do it that way. And then at the end of the year, you have $365 that you can put into their bank account or their college fund or use it for some special activity that they may be participating in. You can also do it for your grandchildren. You can have an envelope for each one of your grandlittles. And every day, you put a $1 bill in their envelopes. And then at the end of the year, you can contribute that money to their college fund. You know, that's a nice, that's a nice little... Um, living inheritance gift, I would say, uh, to your grandlittles or put it into their bank accounts or whatever. But um, it's super, super simple. And I know that there are quite a few of you that are faithfully participating in the Dollar a Day program. So as of today, you should have $274 in your envelope. Can you believe we've gone through 274 days today already in 2017? It's craziness, isn't it? It is. The year is just flying by. The year is flying by. So we've had a lovely, lovely weekend here at Lilybug Lane. We are winding down the weekend this evening. We are in the 7 o'clock hour. Our weather was absolutely, absolutely beautiful this weekend. Absolutely beautiful. We couldn't have asked for a more beautiful weekend. Um, the temperatures were very, very mild, actually quite chilly. Um, we did have the therm, we have had the heat on for the past two, two nights here at Lilybug Lane, and we will have the heat on for tonight also, since it is supposed to get down quite, um, quite chilly tonight. And um, Louise did very, very well at bowling yesterday. And then she and Chewy stayed down by the bowling alley. And um, she did what they call cosmic bowling, which is they have lights and music and they do it in the dark and all that kind of stuff. It's really a lot of fun for the kids. So they, so she stayed for that um, yesterday. And then they did a lot of sh little shopping at the Walmart down there and um, had a really, really nice time. 
I stayed around here at Lilybug Lane and TCB'd, which was exactly what I wanted to do. And then today, this morning, Chewy woke up and uh, went golfing, and they had to delay. Their tea time was at 7.45 this morning, you all know that, but they did have to delay an hour because there was frost on the golf course, and the golf course does not let you uh, golf if there is frost on the golf course. So they had to wait an hour till it warmed up a little bit and the frost you know, dissipated, evaporated, whatever it does, but whatever frost does. So anyway, so very, very nice day. And then he worked um, out in the yard a little bit. We worked out in the yard to, um, you know, continue to uh, take down some of the flowers. He worked on a couple of projects out in the garage that he is doing. And of course, I worked on some projects and I changed the cat's boxes today, which you all know, you all know is a process here at Lilybug Lane because I have four cat's boxes to change. And um, so I did that. I colored my hair, um, or at least my roots. I did my roots, and my roots, I have gone to dark brown, so I'm trying to knock a lot of the red out of my hair because I don't prefer it anymore. Um, you all know that when I was younger, I've told you that I was I was dyeing my hair auburns, a dark auburn, so I was a, a redhead in my younger years, but now that I've gotten grayer, much, much grayer, and much, much older, I don't prefer to have any red in my hair because it just isn't a very, um, it's just not a red that I prefer because of my the gray in my hair naturally. So anyway, so I did that. Changed the bed sheets on both, both beds, so that was very exciting. You know how much I love to do that. And I did get a couple of crafts done. I did, and I'm gonna share them with you. So anyway, so I hope everybody's had a great, great weekend. I know a lot of you were going to be very, very busy this weekend. Um, let's see. Teresa had two birthday parties to attend this weekend and her grandson's football game. So we know that she was busy. And then um, Tanisha was hosting a surprise 16th birthday party. So I bet you that was exciting. And let's see. Um... Valerie, Auntie Cuckoo, is hosting a Hollow Week on her channel, which her channel is Auntie Cuckoo, and what she will be doing is she will be offering a DIY project for Halloween every day this week, and it started today. So if you are interested in super cute, super easy, um, economical, budget-friendly DIYs, then make sure you check out Val's channel every single day this week because she is hosting Hollow Week. So that'll be a lot, a lot of fun. And she had a great, great project for today, uh, posted today. So go check her out. Um, Lisa, Lisa Hoffman, who we know is Megan and Christian's mom here in our circle of friends. She wanted to let me know that she picked up two of the fabulous Faded Glory dusters that, um, you know, the, the, the lounge dusters that I picked up, she was able to pick up two of them at the Walmart. So that is very, very exciting. Um, Tracy let us all know that it has cooled down, down in Waco, Texas. They had some rain and it, it lowered the temperature. So that's always good because I know it can be quite, quite warm down there in Texas. And, Kelly P-B, who is a circle member, let us know in the comment section that her and her mister will be on a live interview on the channel Two Family Homestead here on YouTube, and that will be tomorrow, Monday, on October the 2nd. So if you want to check that out, just go to Two Family Homestead, and you will be able to see Kelly and her husband on a live interview on that channel. Um, Amy of Amy's Got a Glue Gun. I just saw before we started our visit that she has a rummage sale haul posted. So that will be very, very exciting. I always love Amy's channel because she's a, such a good garage sailor and such a good rummage sailor, if that makes any sense. And she also has fabulous, fabulous home tours during the different holidays throughout the year. And Halloween is her favorite holiday, if I'm correct in saying that. I think I am. But she will have a fabulous, fabulous home tour coming up for Halloween very, very soon. But she has a rummage sale up right now. So I'm 
rummage sale haul up right now, so I'm going to be looking forward to that. So it sounds like everybody is is very very well in our circle of friends and had a had good plans for the weekend. So I'm glad about that. I'm certainly certainly glad about that. Well, it is the first of October, and you know what we traditionally do at the first part of the month or the first of the month. What do we do? Full moon information. Full moon information. It is full moon information time, friends. It is. It is. You all know how much we love the full moon here at Lilybug Lane. We love all the moon phases, but the full moon phase is our favorite. And, um, you know, I am a firm, firm believer, and we have talked about this before, that the moon and the moon phases do, I feel, directly affect us, our households, our animals, our children, our spouses, <laughs> just our lives in general. And I know a lot of you can agree with me. I know a lot of you can agree with me. So the full moon for October, we are already into waxing gibbous. So we are well on our way to the full moon. It will be in a few days. The full moon is October 5th, 2017 this month. So we are quite, quite early this month for the full moon. And officially, officially for the United States, the full moon will be on October 5th at 2.40 p.m. So we will not get to see the full moon officially, but we will get to see it later in the evening on the 5th. So the full moon for October is known as the Hunter's Moon, and we all know here at Lilybud Lane, because I say it every single month, that the each full moon of the year has a name, and or even more than one name, but it does have a name, and the names were given to the full moon full moon phases by the Native American Indians. And when the settlers came over to the New World, the Indians taught the settlers about the full moons and they, the settlers just adapted the names that the Indians gave the full moons. And the Native Americans named the full moons according to what was happening in their lives, in their tribes, in their environments, you know, so it was pretty easy to do. So this this month, the moon is called the Hunter's Moon. Now, this is a special moon because it is one of it is the first moon after the autumnal equinox. So the full moons that occur before and after the autumnal equinox are 20 minutes later rising in the sky every night. Um, and this results in more days that the bright moon is in the sky at dusk, which gave the Native Americans more time to hunt and prepare for winter. So they were able to see by the light of the moon to be able to do more during the day or earlier in the day in order to prepare for the winter uh, season that was coming up. So if that made any sense at all, I don't know. I write down, I kind of preface it, you know, I kind of do like a, what do you call it, a summary of what I read. But um, you know that we get all of our moon information here at Lilybug Lane on moongiant.com, www.moongiant.com. It is an absolutely wonderful, wonderful website. Um, I would invite you all to go see it. There is a lot of information on there. It is very easy to navigate. And there's a fun little offer on there that they have where you can see that if you were born on a full moon. And that's a lot of fun because, um, you know, if you were born on a full moon, it kind of gives you a little bit of a personality overview um, of people that were born during that time of over under a full moon. So very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. So that is that is all of our announcements. So the full moon will be coming very, very quickly this this uh this month. So if your if your household is already kind of a little bit bajangly, or you are feeling a little bit bajangly, or your children are a little bit bajangly, or your animals, <laughs> your animals are a little bit bajangly, then you know why, because we are very, very close to a full moon. So I hope that all of you get to go outside and just enjoy the
the fall sky at nighttime. It is an absolutely wonderful, wonderful thing. So, and it is crystal clear right now here at Lily Bug Lane. So we will be going out in a little while to uh, to see the moon, to admire the moon. So I was able to get some uh, some little tiny projects that I wanted to get done. I have started decorating for fall here at Lily Bug Lane. And what I'm kind of doing is now that Louise is older, you know, I'm kind of getting it out of the more whimsical um, Halloween decorations and starting to do more of the, um, I think I've told you all before, more of the Victorian, more of the kind of um, macabre um, decorating style for Halloween. And um, I just think it will mesh well into the fall decor also. So I'm kind of doing more fall, but I am kind of inserting a little bit of Halloween in there too. And then when Halloween is over, I will just remove it and replace it very easily with some, some more fall stuff closer to, you know, turkeys and pilgrims and things like that. So I was able to get a couple of things done um, today um, that I had wanted to do. One of the things that I wanted to do is that I've seen a lot of tassels and I really like tassels um, for like just little accents on doorknobs or on the on the um, handles of drawers and things like that. And you see a lot of different um, tassels, you know, they're very, very fancy or they can be very rustic or whatever. And I thought to myself, huh, Lala, you could probably do that because it's probably fairly easy. So I went ahead and just made a little fabric tassel here. And this is all Halloween fabric from the fat quarters that I got at the Walmart. And what I did was I just ripped strips of fabric and then folded them over and put a, a piece of sisal twine in there. And then I just wrapped the top of it for a bit with sisal twine to hold it together. And then you just kind of shake it out like this and, um, you know, it's just like a little fun tassel. And you can hang it on a doorknob or you can hang it on a, a drawer pull or something like that. And I just thought this would be something neat. But I've seen quite a few of these in um, decor tours that have been done. And I thought it was something neat. So, um, you know, I went ahead and did one. And I, I, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I don't think it's as full as I would have liked it to be. So this was my first one that I did. But I wanted to show you that. So I was happy about that. And I'm just hanging it here on the, um, let me take this ladybug off here. I'm just hanging it here on the doorknob of the, um, the vault. So this is our pantry room and where the cats have their litter boxes. And so I'm just kind of hanging it here just as decoration, um, you know, for Halloween. So I will take that down once Halloween is over, but um, we'll see how long it takes the kitty cats to notice it and start playing with it. But um, I thought that was a neat, just a neat little something to do, something that I had been planning to do. And you all know I gotta keep, I gotta keep moving forward with this mojo. If I'm feeling it, I'm doing it. So anyway, and you can also make those out of ribbon too, the exact same way. You can make them out of embroidery floss. There is a lot of DIYs on YouTube on how to make tassels. And some of them are very, very simple and some of them are very, very elaborate. So, and it's a it's a cheap and easy way to just kind of add a little bit of zhuzh to your room, to your decor, to your decorations, you know, something like that. So there you go with that. Now, the other thing that I did this weekend was I went to pack a tans all by myself. I went to Sharon all by myself yesterday. I did, I did. And um, I just had to run up there very, very quickly because I was looking for a very specific color of a chenille stem, a pipe cleaner. And I was not able to find the color that I wanted, but I was able to pick up some dark brown and I've already cut these into thirds. So that's why they're in the, in the plastic bag. But um, you all know that I bought um, initially, I had bought three of these rolls of um, burlap at the Walmart, and these are on sale at the Walmart. I had initially bought three, then I went back and bought two more, um, and I will be picking up some more 
you know, every time I'm there because, you know, I want to have a nice stock of it and everything. But you can buy this all over the place. But they do have it at Walmart. It's five and a half inches wide and it is 30 feet long, nice and long. And it's finished on the edges. It is not a raw edge burlap. So you're not going to have a lot of that fraying and stuff that you typically have with burlap. So I had told you all that I wanted to do a burlap wreath. Um, and I was a little bit hesitant because you all know the absolute debacle that I had with the deco mesh. And I'm still, I'm still not over that nightmare of the deco mesh, but I'm getting over that nightmare. Well, you all know that I wanted to do a burlap wreath and I, I do plan to do a larger burlap wreath for a specific part here, a specific area here at Lilybug Lane. But I went ahead and did a burlap wreath. This is a 12 inch wreath, round wreath form from the Dollar Tree. And this is one roll, one complete roll, 30 feet of the burlap, um, I guess you would call it ribbon, from the Walmart. And then that's why I needed to go to Pacatan's to pick up the chenille stems. I was looking for beige, but they were completely sold out of beige. Um, so I went ahead and got dark brown. But this is my burlap wreath. Now this is done in a loop fashion. I got the um, I got the inspiration or the instruction from a YouTube channel called Country Charm by Tracy. And if you are not familiar with her channel, I would invite you to go check it out because she has some absolutely beautiful wreaths that she does. She does a lot of cry cricket cry cricket is that how you say it? A lot of cricket. Um, videos and you know things like that but I really like her channel and she did an instructional video on how to do a burlap wreath in the loop um, method and so that is what I followed but this came out very very nicely it is not very fluffy but you can make it more fluffy if you want it and then the back it's not on a traditional work wreath. You kind of make the work wreath yourself. But you can see on the back here where the um, uh, chenille stems are. And you just loop and hook and loop and hook and loop and hook. So I was very, very happy with this. I love how it turned out. I was a little bit hesitant again because I am not a, I am not a good deco mesh artist. But I was very, very happy about this. So this is just the base, and I will be making a couple of, couple more. But this is the base, and I will be doing a, um, a Halloween wreath to put on the back door, um, and I'll add to it. But I, then I will share that with you also. But I was very, very pleased with how it turned out. And um, it was funny because, like, I really took my time, and I was really, you know, sure to do it the way that I had seen it done on the video and it turned out very well. But can I tell you, my fingertips, like especially my thumbs and my pointers are really, really sore because of twisting the chenille stems and I was twisting them like really, really hard. And so my fingertips are sore, but you know, if that's the price I have to pay to have a fabulous burlap wreath, that's the price I have to pay. And, um, you know, wreaths can be very, very expensive. I know that, I mean, I've, I've looked at a lot of wreaths and I know that they can be very, very expensive. So if you can, you know, make one for yourself, then, you know, it, it is a, it is a money saver. It is a big, big money saver. So I'm excited about that and I will definitely be sharing more, uh, burlap wreaths that I do in the future in the future. So we are starting a new week. We are starting the first week of October. Um, this will be very, very odd. It, we will probably, <clears throat> it'll feel like the month goes very, very quickly because we're starting the month on, on Sunday. So we're already going to be into the week and then, uh, you know, the week will just seem to go by or the, the month will seem to go by very, very quickly. But I hope all of you have a great, great start to the week. I will not see you until Tuesday for our Val Vlog Day. Please remember that Wednesday is our Thoughts and Prayers request video. So if you have a request for Thoughts and Prayers, 
that you would like included in this week's video, please feel free to contact me through YouTube messaging or at lilybuglane at gmail.com and I would be happy to include your request in this week's video. So may, please feel free to contact me. If it's easier for you to put it down in the comment section, then feel free to do that. Are we blurry or is it me? <laughs> Are we blurry or is it me? It might be me. <laughs> Please feel free to put your request down in the comment section if that is more convenient for you. Keeping in mind, though, that the comment section is a public forum. So, you know, if you would rather just contact me through YouTube messaging or at lilybuglane at gmail.com, then your, uh, you know, your request and anything that you say will uh, remain private. So just to let you all know that. But as always, our thoughts and prayers request video goes out on Wednesday. So thanks so much for joining me this evening. Again, happy October to everyone. I hope that you are all well. I think of you often and you are never far in my thoughts. I hope that you are happy. I hope that you are healthy. But most of all, and most importantly, I hope that you are safe. Thanks for visiting this evening and I will see you again very, very soon. Good night.